welcome to this SUP Border video about getting prepared for the race season ahead. My name is Bo and I am joined today by Blue Ewer, six time national UK champion. Blue, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Blue, you're going to give us some insights into getting prepared, getting ready for the race season ahead, maybe some tips on some training drills and how people can fit it into their busy schedules. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You excited for it? Yeah, no, ready? Yeah, guess, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're going to learn a lot today. Blue is. Obviously that national champion in the UK, placed highly in a lot of the European events as well. And 2023 is gonna be a big year for you. What's coming up? Yeah, sure. So this year I'm basically gonna take a step away from the national racing uh, and try and uh, branch out into the Euro Tour and then spend some more time on the APP World Tour, like racing against the best guys in the world this year. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going away for a month of off season training next month. Um, and then after that, it's straight into the Euro Tour for the season. So an exciting year ahead. Yeah, very exciting. When does that Euro Tour start? When's kind of the race season start for you? Yeah, sure. So for me, it starts in April. Uh, I know there's a few events going on in the UK and elsewhere beforehand. Um, but I just want to give myself a good amount of time to be properly prepared. So yeah, it starts first weekend of April for me. Great. Awesome. So how can we get prepared for a race season? And first off, why is it important to prepare for, for racing season? Yeah, sure. So obviously, if you if you prepare and you're training and you're ready for the race ahead, um, it always makes it so much easier. Uh, if you rock up to a race and you're not prepared properly, um, it's going to make life hard for you. Uh, if you train hard, then racing is always going to be easier, the easy part for you, and you can enjoy it a lot more. Um, so yeah, both mentally, physically, um, and technically, like it's very important. Yeah. And what are some of the things you do to be prepared? Give us an overview of maybe just a quick list of things that we're going to be covering in this video, but that you do to, to become prepared. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, like for me, really, like if I was just paddling all the time and just doing the same paddling sessions all the time, um, become a bit tedious over time and you wouldn't enjoy it quite so much. So for me, it's important um, to a variety of training because um, it keeps me motivated um, and it means I can push hard and train hard week in, week out. Um, so yeah, for me, it's covering all areas of training, not just on the water, off the water as well. Um, and yeah, keeping the sessions fresh and mixing them up. Yeah. Yeah. So you spoke a bit about on the water and off the water training. Yeah. Can you let's focus on the on the water training to start with? Yeah. What sure. would you be doing out there on the water to start maybe warming up your body or just to start getting yourself ready? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So obviously when I get down, I always warm up before I go out paddling and a little bit off the water and then have a warm up on the water. Um, yeah, especially here in the UK when it's freezing cold in the winter <laughs> mornings. Um, got to like, let give you time for your muscles to warm up properly. Um, so yeah, I usually have a little warm up and then five or 10 minutes and then I'll get into my session. Um, so padding sessions for me, like vary. Yeah. So I'm not, if you're going out, um, especially if, as like more of like a recreational racer, I know a lot of people will go out and they just go and paddle five, 10 K, um, and that's their training done. But if you, do, you want to train properly, um, you're only going to get so much out after doing that. Um, and it's important to train in different intensities over different durations of time. Um, so having like a variety of training to cover kind of all areas rather than just focusing on, on one thing, I think is really important on the water. Yeah, definitely is. And what would you be doing on the water? We spoke a bit earlier about doing some interval training and yeah, sure. maybe doing a little bit of dis different distances as well. What would be your kind of go-to training session for on the water? Yeah, sure. So for me, my favorite sessions are like those shorter intervals. So you're talking between anything from 30 seconds to a couple of minutes because um, the intensity is super high. You've got your rest in between to your recover, but it's a short amount of time, so you can stay focused. You can push hard throughout. Um, so for me, they're my favourites. Although there's loads of other sessions which are still really important, and that's what I enjoy the most. Alongside your interval training, is there any specific drills that you do, or are you focusing on technique a little bit more? Yeah, sure. I think it's important, obviously, as well as paddling hard, to have sessions that's going to focus on your paddling technique, um, as well as other technical aspects. Um, if you're paddling with friends and stuff, going out and practicing like drafting and stuff, as well as like your boy turns or beach beach starts and stuff. Um, little parts of your race, which although might not make up big parts of the race, they can be really important still. Um, and it's good to practice these things. Um, but I think specifically like having sessions focusing on technique is, is a good thing to do um, because paddling with bad technique, you're gonna be hindering yourself quite a bit. Exactly, so having different sessions for technique and then more training specific yeah. sessions. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good balance to have. Yeah, yeah. Um, with your different types of racing that we have, we have long distance, technical, sprint racing. Yeah. Do you change up what you're practicing on the water beforehand or before a race, depending on what type of race it is? Yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, um, being myself, I've 
based all disciplines are not like specific to one or the other so i have to kind of my trainings have to cover everything really um but for sure if i've got a, a beach race coming up which i know is going to be a shorter distance one um lots of boy turns and beach starts and stuff the weeks months before i will be spending more time focusing on those little parts um so yeah i would definitely tweak my training uh to to fit the kind of events which i'm training for and if you just follow let's say a general plan um, and you're not necessarily going to be prepared right for the races you've got to do yeah fair enough and then let's step off the water now because yeah, sure. there's also a lot of work that goes into training being prepared getting your body ready for the race season ahead yeah. off the water what are some of the things that you do off the water that will help for people getting ready for a race yeah sure i mean for me like in the winter being based in the uk and uh, we're not somewhere where it's sunny and warm all year round um so sometimes in the winter it is too windy um and you can't always get out um and being like still working full-time and not being full-time athlete yet um i'm limited to hours as well of the daylight so for me like the gym you know, a massive part of my training um so i'm lucky enough to train at a really good gym um and i can yeah get down to that really easily um so yeah i'm in the gym like probably three or four days a week um doing structured gym sessions and that's just going to help keep my muscles conditioned um in the off season specifically it helped me get stronger um ahead of the year ahead um but i also do quite a bit of running as well so running for me is like a another good form of court cardio um and really get into those higher heart rate zones really working myself hard do you have uh, specific muscle groups that you target when you're at the gym yeah, is it sure. the muscles that you use when we paddleboard yeah absolutely yeah um like but generally my sessions will cover kind of all body parts um i don't train just one part or the other um so i feel like it is important to have your whole body conditioned um but absolutely like my back, my shoulders, um, my arms, stuff like that, which I'm going to be using a lot. Um, I will be doing a lot of exercises which are specific to them. Um, but doing like your legs and stuff, keeping them strong, um, I also find really important. I don't train core specifically. I feel like I get a lot of that out of paddling um, and you're able to engage that when you're doing all other movements in the gym anyway. Um, but for sure, yeah, I would definitely put focus into kind of the muscle groups which I would be using. Yeah. If someone was watching and maybe they couldn't get out paddling that often, maybe they're out paddling once a week, or they can't really fit in a gym session, what would be a couple of tips or a couple of things that they could focus on that would really help them get ready? Yeah, sure. So even if you haven't got the access to the gym um, and you're limited for time, there's still plenty of stuff you can do at home. Um, there's plenty of little homework as you can do um, just to get, keep yourself moving, keep yourself fit, um, whether it's going for a 20 minute run around the block, um, whether you're doing some intervals when you're running, or even if you're literally just doing um, like a high intensity workout in your living room at home. Um, just keeping yourself active on a regular basis is really important. Um, as soon as you stop, like a long period of time, it can be hard to keep it going. But if you maintain some level of fitness, you're generally not going to lose much. With all this training that you are doing, how do you track your analytics? How do you know you're getting better? How do you know you're improving? Yeah, sure. So all my like paddling sessions and running sessions, all do on my watch. Um, so everything's all tracked. So after my sessions, I can go back and review it and look over. Um, and although you might go weeks and weeks and see no progress, um, if you're consistent, you do end up seeing results and the feeling when you are seeing your times drop in or you're finishing your sessions and you're feeling a lot more full, a lot more healthy and a lot fitter, uh, it's really rewarding. Um, even if you're not winning races, just seeing that happening yourself or even body changes in your body, um, it's still really rewarding itself and it shows you that the training is paying off. Can you just give us maybe a quick rundown, if you don't mind, of just uh, kind of what your week looks like or what maybe your day looks like? How many hours you might spend on the water or yeah, at sure. the gym yeah so generally so I, i'm paddling most days so yeah five or six days a week uh this time of year um obviously i'm probably paddling more in season um and yeah next month or so i'll be paddling pretty much every day but i generally will paddle in the morning um start my day off well and then in the evening i'll either be running or gym or going to both so i tend to have two sessions a day um sometimes three if it's got loads happening um, and i'll try and have one day of rest a week um, just to allow my body to completely refresh and, and recover. Well, it sounds like you're very prepared for the upcoming race season. Hopefully. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing those tips. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, sure. I think um, one thing would be like, obviously, everyone else who's training and not everyone has got like the time or necessarily the motivation or hours they have that I do to put into it. Um, so if you are training for racing, um, just make sure it's specific to you. Um, if you haven't got the time to go every day or go that often, um, just make sure you set yourself goals which are achievable um something because if you're working set goals which you can't achieve you're losing motivation so make sure it's realistic to what you want to do 
um, and make sure your sessions are kind of planned to what you want to do. Um, it's something that you're going to enjoy. Um, so it's going to keep you motivated and make training a lot easier. Now, I hope you guys have learned a lot watching this video. I know I just did then, just listening to Blue speak. So we want to thank you, Blue, for coming in. And yeah, I hope you did learn a lot. We're going to be coming back with Blue for some more racing tips. We've got some drafting videos coming up. We've got some top tips from Blue as well. So make sure you do stay tuned for those coming out on Supwater very soon. Thanks again, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you.